GCS 409. The Generator Control Station GCS 409 is a complete digital console for a genset that displays all the engine parameters. It has a half inch seven segment red color LED to display the various engine parameters like RPM, engine run hour, battery charging current that are also indicated by specific LEDs on the side of the display. Note the GCS 409 does not need a separate DC ammeter to measure battery charging current. You have a key switch to turn on the display and the I button is used to start the engine. Please note, the key switch provided on the front panel of GCS 409 is sensitive and hence it should be operated with minimum force. It has only two positions, off and run. Never try to start the engine by operating this key switch. Always use I button for starting the engine. Put the key switch in off mode when the genset is not in use. This will prevent unwanted discharging of the battery. The GCS senses the lube oil pressure, water temperature and fuel level through the respective sensors fitted in the engine. These inputs are connected to separate bar graphs indicators in the GCS panel. The GCS is also programmed for tripping the engine in case any of these parameters goes out of limits and alarms and faults are indicated directly by these LEDs. You have low lube oil pressure, water temperature, radiator water level, low fuel level, external stop fault, charging alternator failure. The alarms are indicated by the flashing of the corresponding LEDs. On the GCS, you have a display scroll switch D. This is the GCS 409 serial number. G indicates GCS, first two digits manufacturing year, second two digits manufacturing month. This is the serial number. T is cranking time delay and E is emergency stop. On the back side you have female connector. Terminal details. Terminal number one. Face. Terminal number two. Neutral. Terminal 1 and 2 are connected to main alternator output for sensing the RPM. Terminal number 3. External stop input. 4. Low fuel level switch input. 5. Charging alternator. 6. Radiator water level switch input. 7. High water temperature switch input. 8. Low oil pressure switch input. 9. RPM selection input. 10. Remote start input. 11. Remote stop input. Terminal 10 and 11 are connected to PIU for start and stop command. 12. Output 3 Transistor output Fuel level at 99% And now let's see the connections for terminals 13 to 24 Notice that there is a shunt resistor placed behind the terminal This is a wire wound resistor that is helpful to measure the DC amperes Take care not to damage this resistor 13 Charging positive the signal from charging alternator positive is connected to this terminal to measure the charging current. 14. Receive and 15. Transmit. This is RS232 serial port terminal used for communicating with external device like the GSM modem. This feature is optional. 16. Crank output. This is connected to start a motor 17 output 2 fuel level at 40 percent 18 output 1 fuel level at 10 percent 19 stop output used to operate stop solenoid relay 
The time is programmed at 10 seconds. 20. Water temperature sensor input. Analog signal from water temperature sensor. 21. Lube oil pressure sensor input. Analog signal from lube oil pressure sensor. 22. Fuel level sensor. Analog signal from tank unit. 23. Battery positive. Connected to engine battery positive. 24. Battery negative. Connected to engine battery negative. To start the engine, first turn on the key switch. The run LED flashes. The temperature and fuel level are indicated. Now press the I ignition button. The engine will start. The run LED becomes steady and oil pressure is also indicated. Notice that the display indicates various parameters like RPM, engine run hour, battery charging current. Now by pressing the D button continuously for 5 seconds, the scroll LED is turned on leading to manual scrolling of the parameters on the 7 segment display. To view a particular parameter, press the D button once again. In the GCS409, a unique crank blocking relay is provided. So, when you press the I button, the engine will crank 3 times with a delay of 5 seconds between each crank if the engine does not start. Further cranking is blocked by the crank blocking relay. Also in case of any fault sensed, this module will automatically shut down the engine and will also indicate the fault through the flashing of the corresponding LEDs. The run LED also starts flashing. User cannot start the engine till the fault is not cleared. Turn off key switch to reset the controller then turn on. When the engine is running, GCS continuously monitors the under over speed conditions. If the engine RPM falls below 45 Hz, then the GCS will shut down the engine and the display will show UNSP. Similarly, if the engine RPM goes above 55 Hz, then also the GCS will shut down the engine and the display will show OUSP. The GCS409 has been extensively used in telecom site installations as a reliable generator control unit. When the GCS409 is used along with the PIU AMF panel, the engine can be independently started and stopped by the PIU. If due to some reason the PIU fails to stop the genset under faulty condition, the GCS409 will stop the genset thereby preventing any damage to the genset. So never ever run the genset bypassing the GCS409 controller even if the DG is connected to PIU.